Hello again, I have a cold. Let's write some code. Today we're gonna to be building a really simple game with uh, WebRTC. It's gonna be a totally not boring, moving square game that you can play with your friends. So think like Agario. Now in the last video I did about WebRTC, I talked about creating a peer-to-peer -peer video chat app. And it uses pure peer-to-peer, -peer, meaning besides the server that's like hosting your JavaScript files and the HTML and all that, um, all the data was sent between the peers. This means you needed to copy this really long ID called the SDP ID, and this tells the peers on not only where they are, but how to get to them, um, to how to traverse through their network. So it was necessary for them to be that long. So in a real app, your users are going to probably find that very annoying to copy that big long ID um, in order to play with each other. So instead, today we're going to use a signaling server. A signaling server is a server that coordinates the handshake in between the peers. So it sends back and forth that ID and lets the peers know how to talk to each other. So rather than having to copy and paste that long SDP ID, it will do it for your peers. Now it sounds complicated because it is, but not for us because we're going to be using a library called Signal Hub to do all the hard work for us. Now I got my typical development set up here, and so I'm going to go over here to my terminal and I'm going to ins type npm install signal hub, signal hub, and I'm going to save it to my package.json dependencies. Now I'm going to go over here into my package.json and I'm going to add a new script here. Uh, instead of test here, because I'm not going to write any tests, uh, I'm going to add a, uh, a script called signal hub. And instead of running no test, what we're going to do is we're going to use this to start up the signal hub server. So we'll say signal hub, we're going to listen on port. 8080. So now when I go over to my terminal and I type npm run signal hub, it will start up my signal hub server so I can begin signaling peers in my app. Now I just want to make it clear that the signaling server is only to help peers find each other. After that, all your data is getting sent directly between the peers. Also, I want to point out that you don't have to run your own signaling server. There are many out there. Although I'm not aware of any free ones, um, but I, I think there are many paid signaling servers if you Google them. But it's so easy to run your own by just using Signal Hub, so just use that. Okay, great. So now that our peers don't have to copy and paste these long SDP IDs to each other, to talk to each other, we can start building our game. So I'm gonna open up a new tab here. I'm gonna run npm start to start up my development server. Now, if you're not familiar with my development setup, uh, please go check out uh, github.com slash shama slash Let's write code, and um, I have instructions there on how to get you quickly set up. Okay, so over in our index file, we are going to require signal hub. So we'll say signal hub equals require signal hub. And now we can use that to create our hub. So we'll say hub equals signal hub, and we'll call this as a function. And the first thing uh, we're going to add is we want to give a name for our game or our app. And so I'll just say my game. And then the next thing we need to specify is a list of signaling servers. So what is it going to use to do the handshaking to find other peers? And so what we can do is since we started a server here on port 8080, our signaling server, we can go back and we can add that server. So let's say HTTP colon slash slash localhost 8080. Great, now that we have our hub created, we can start subscribing and listening to any events or any, any data being sent um, in this hub. So what we'll do is we'll say hub.subscribe, subscribe. We're gonna subscribe to the update and we're gonna say on data, it's a, an event. So anytime we get data in, it's gonna, this function is gonna be called with the data that was passed over from the other peer. Now, of course, when we run this and refresh the page, we're not getting any data because nobody's sending any data. So let's send some data. So we're gonna go down here and we'll do a set interval. Um, set interval function. And we'll say every second we wanna send some data out to all of our peers. So let's say hub broadcast, because we're gonna broadcast and send a message to all of the peers. And we're gonna use the channel update here uh, because that's the channel that we're subscribed to. And what we're going to send out to all the peers is just uh, our, our hash, our, the, the hash on our window. So we'll say window location hash. So whatever our hash is put in, uh, we're going to listen to that and, um, and send it out to all the other peers. 
So the last thing we need to do is just console log out this data so we can read it. Go over here to the browser and let's create uh, one person. He'll be uh, he'll be a grizzly, and then we will open up another tab. And this one, this one will be a polar. So what we'll do now is every second we should get a message from ourselves, Grizzly, because we're broadcasting to every peer, including ourselves. Um, and we're also getting one from the other tab or the other person, um, Polar. Super cool, but the console is boring, so let's draw some stuff to the screen. And so to do that, I want to keep track of the players and um, their positioning on the page. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new file called player.js. And I'm going to cheat and copy and paste some code because I'm sure you don't want to see me type all of this. Um, but this is basically just a, a player class that you can pass in some data, um, such as a color. And if no color is assigned, then we're going to use a random color. And let's just go paste it in down here. And that will just generate a random hex code for us um, to get a random color. Now, the other parts are we're going to create a div tag. And we're going to assign it these uh, CSS properties um, to its style attribute. Um, and then we're going to set the random background color we generated. And then finally, we're going to append it to our document body to add it to the page. Now, we don't just want our players sitting up in the zero, zero top left corner of our page. So we need another function here called update. Um, so update allows us to pass in more data. And this will update the x and y coordinates and then set the uh, style on the page to move the, um, the little div tag around the page. Great, so now that we have a way to create new players and we're exporting our player class, we can go back over here to our main scripts and we can use that player class. So let's say const player equals require dot slash player dot js. Now the first player we want to create is one for ourselves. So we're going to say const u equals new player to create a player and add it to the page for ourselves. So we want to be able to move ourselves around the page. So we're going to add a key press event to our document here. So anytime a key is pressed, we are going to move our player in the direction based on the key. And so we're going to use the WASD keyboard layout here. So when the A key is pressed, then it will move the player left or negative in the X direction. If it presses D, it's going to be moving right or in the positive X direction. If it presses W, it's going to be moving up negative y direction and pressing s it's going to be moving down in the positive y direction so this is great so the next time our player gets updated uh, it will render the new location on the screen so what we're going to do here is we're going to use this set interval and instead we're going to say u dot update to update ourselves and the position on the page and instead of doing it one second we're going to do it 100 milliseconds now in a real game, you would really want your render loop and your network tick to be different, and you wouldn't be using set interval because it's not the greatest thing for making games. But that would make this video really, really long to include all that and describe all that. So we're going to save all of that for another video another time. Great. So let's go check this out and see what it's like. Sometimes you have to refresh because the random color sometimes generates a white color. Um, so now when I hit the D key, you can see it moves in the direction, the S goes down, it goes up. Great, we can move our player around the screen. But this isn't a single player game, so let's also let the other peers know where we have gone. So in our set interval here, we're gonna say hub broadcast, and we're gonna use that same update channel here. And we're just gonna pass it U to broadcast ourselves and our latest position of ourselves. So the last thing we need to do is to render the other players um, or the other peers on our own screen. And so what we're going to do is we're going to create a hash here of the other players. And then when we get some data in our update channel event here, um, we are going to add the players to this player hash. Now we're, we're going to use the color as the ID. Um, and so what we're going to do is we're going to say if the data color equals the U color, return. Why? Because we don't really care about keeping track of ourselves. We already are keeping track of ourselves on the page. So anytime we get an event from ourselves, we just simply ignore it. The next thing we want to do is if we haven't seen this player before, so we'll say if player data color, 
if that that doesn't exist we don't have we never seen this player before let's go ahead and create this player so we'll say players data color equals new player and we'll pass in the data to create that that player then the last thing we need to do is that anytime we get this event, the player may have new coordinates so what we want to do is we want to make sure we update that player so we'll say players data color and we'll call the update event and we'll pass in that data to continually update their position on the page. Nice, so let's open up two tabs next to each other and we can see if this works. So let's drag this over here and this one over here. I'm gonna refresh this one and then refresh this one. Uh, move this one over a little bit so we can see each other. All right, so now I'm gonna move this one over and down a little bit and then I'm gonna jump over to this tab and I move this guy down a little bit and over here and you can see it's updating on both pages. Uh, it works. All right, so I know I said that the last thing was the last thing and I think the last thing before that was the last thing, but this is actually the last thing um, that I should mention is that we've been building all this WebRTC neat stuff on a local host server. And um, local hosts run with special permissions for WebRTC to let you build it and then when you go and push it to production or push it out to your server and try it on a real domain, the browser will crush your dreams and it won't work at all. And the reason is, is because when you bundle up this code um, into your JavaScript file, throw it into HTML, and throw it up on a page somewhere, um, you need to run it with a valid HTTPS connection in order for it to work. Now, the good news is, is if you don't have a server with an SSL certificate installed, just go to github.com, uh, create an account, create a repo, um, and then push to a branch called gh-pages, and it will host those scripts for free, and it uses HTTPS. So if you're running into some issues where it's just not working for you and you don't know why, uh, it's probably that reason you're not running on a valid HTTPS server. So anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, then please share it and help others build some games. I don't know, maybe they'll make a game that you can play together with. Um, and if you want to see more videos, then subscribe. Thanks again for watching.